champions each year, Rainbow Mealworms is your one-stop shop for all your insect needs. Their quality feeders and A-plus customer service keep me coming back to support the health and growth of all of our animals. Visit them today at rainbowmealworms.net to place your order. I want to take this time to shout out Redline Shipping. They are the number one fastest growing reptile and animal shipping company in the world right now, and that is for good reason. Use promo code GECKO5 today at checkout for an additional $5 off your shipping label. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Geeky Gecko Creations episode. Today is a pretty exciting day. Um, you know, we're always looking for, you know, f- uh, forward towards advancing husbandry in the hobby and just keeping of reptiles. Oh, I got some dirt on my shoulder. I was uh, redoing some of the sailfin stuff. So thank you, Gay Show. Love your videos. Appreciate that shout out. Um, we are announcing our partnership that we are working with. Um, a few students at Caltech University that are going to be studying leopard gecko eggs. And so if you want to know a little bit more or need a reminder, I have it in the description of what this study is going to uh, entail. But I am going to ask for some of your guys' help. And if you want to be part of this study, this is a great way to get a large data pool of different leopard gecko eggs that I can present to the team over there so that they can have as many data points as possible. So David Alicia, what's going on? Yvette Holmes, totally not a bunch of rats in a dot, dot, dot. Good to have you guys here, Osti boy. So we'll kind of let a few people filter in, maybe talk about it a little bit more. Um, The title in general uh, is is kind of referring a little bit more to breeders that have the ability to mail us in leopard gecko eggs. But um, I'll I'll start from the beginning. So how's my volume? First of all, I I learned how to test my volume before I start a live stream now, and so I'm much more familiar with like being able to set those uh, the highs and lows, and and hopefully the volume is at a good pace. Um, so. Thank you. Appreciate you letting me know. That's always good. I The um, other episode, what did I do? I did my unboxing of my YouTube plaque, and I was so disappointed with that episode because the volume was terrible, and I was listening back to it, and it was very hard to like listen to myself because of all the cracking and the mic and everything like that. But you live and you learn. So for all you early birds that are here, you guys will get the forefront of how this story started and where it's kind of going. Let me see if the cat wants to go into the bathroom because Whitney's in there and the cat apparently is scratching at the door. You going to go or no? Okay. So they say cats always pick one owner to make their mother, so to speak. And this cat has definitely picked Whitney, but the cat loves me too. I mean, uh, I'll lie on the bed while I'm doing like some social media stuff and the cat will come up to me when Whitney is not here. But when Whitney's here, it's all Whitney. So story beginning to end. Um, We were on our way to the California Super Show two weekends ago. So not this weekend, but the weekend before. And I'm taking phone calls in the car and everything like that. And I, I get a call from what appears to be um, Brit- Britain. And the, the voice on the opposite end is British. But this student is here temporarily in California to for some of their scientific studies at Caltech University. Um, part of this person's scientific research is in sex determination in reptiles. And they have already studied this in certain species of turtles and crocodiles. And now they want to study it in leopard geckos. So we had a nice conversation today for about an hour about all the different theories that go on in leopard gecko incubation. You know, incubating higher produces brighter colors, lower uh, produces females, uh, higher produces males, um, in the middle produces both. And For her particular study right now, she is just focusing on the temperature sex determination. But in the future, maybe we'll get into some stuff about um, 
how the proteins and the cells all mutate and and you know cohesive together to be able to actually make animals different colors and whether temperature is truly a provable data point on that note so i take the phone call and you know we're i'm kind of busy and she kind of tells me what she's talking about and i'm like yeah i'll get back to you um and she was she stayed on me too which is good because i've been so busy i have not been able to catch up to my social media messages thank you austin boy appreciate the love thank you so much um so for anyone who's messaged me on Instagram or Messenger, please forgive my lack of ability to message back right now. It's just been really, really busy. But if you text me or call me at the number below, that is the best and fastest way to reach me. Oh, yes. I got a scratcher thing from Redline Shipping, which we're going to have some pretty cool new information to reveal about Redline Shipping, just putting them even that much more um, – in just a nicer place for people to use as uh, reptile shippers. Um, and so I think it's that's going to be an awesome interview when when that time comes. Um, but get so getting back to the story, this week I get a couple of calls from Britain, which is like star 44 or something like that. And I start looking on my phone. I say, can I answer a call from Britain, you know, without getting like, you know, uh, extra money and stuff like that taxed on to me, um, people getting phony calls from Britain. And apparently a bunch of people get phony calls from the UK and it was suggested on Google not to answer. Well, I never saved this lady's phone number and I didn't get back to her in emails. And so I didn't realize this was her. And so she was calling me and calling me and calling me. And finally today, um, I forget if I, I think what it was, was I finally like looked at my email or picked up the phone and then we had a good long conversation. So I do like snakes. Actually, we have seven new ball pythons, uh, which the majority of which were um, given to us. So thank you very much to the person who gave those to us. And they're healthy as can be beautiful ball pythons. We already got them in our main room uh, getting integrated and uh, we're going to be putting those up on our website soon. There's like a banana pie. There's a bunch of bananas in there, uh, some heck clown stuff in there, uh, enchi, banana, yellow belly stuff in there. So, um, so talking to – her name is um, – oh, shoot. Is it Maria? No, it's something with an M. I just forgot it. But – Nothing much, Kyle. We are collecting leopard gecko eggs right now for a scientific uh, research paper that we are actually participating in. So that's pretty cool. Um, so the the crux of the leopard gecko study is going to be to determine if the types of machinery that they're using is accurate in – decoding whether an animal was incubated at a certain temperature and what sex that animal should be or not. So they have a way she was trying to explain it to me, but I'm not in this field, so I don't know how it works. But she said that they have a way to test the eggshell and see what temperature that eggshell was incubated at. And based on that incubation, um, if their machine is accurate, they could then use that to test reptiles' eggs in the wild, and that could be used to better understand conservation for the species, global warming, and how that's affecting a female's ability to produce more females. You know what I mean? So happy Monday, everybody. Happy Monday. Code Red in here. Our, our Arana in here. Bold Coast exotics in here ashley cox in here yes so here is what we need for the study if you are interested in participating in this study then email me so go to my website below which is www.geekygeckocreations.com send me an email saying that you would like to participate in this study now I cannot cover your shipping costs or any of that. So this is completely on you if you want to participate in this study. But at least you could say that you were part of the study and this monumental moment where we get to partake in this research together. 
So what we need for the research is eggs that were incubated at female temperatures and then eggs that were incubated in the middle and then eggs that were incubated at the top end for males. And you need to tell me what temperature these eggs were incubated at. So if you were, and, and preferably I would like to work with people that are really well in tuned with the temperatures in their incubator and how well those temperatures are fluctuating or not fluctuating because essentially that would give us the best data points. But this person is open to, um, you know, me collecting a bunch of samples from a bunch of breeders and then presenting that to them. And then they could decode that, that information. So like, for example, I incubate my females at 79 to 81. So that's what I would write on my Ziploc bag. I would write 79 to 81. And then if you, if you were you, you would mail it off to me further that this could go. If you want to help just that extra bit, little bit more is you can buy penny Ziploc bags. So like tiny Ziploc bags that can house individual eggs. Individual eggs are going to 100% be what this person prefers. Because um, if there's any contamination of like eggs crushing onto each other that were possibly incubated at different temperature zones or even just I don't know, the, the carbonation of one egg compared to the carbonation of another egg. So this person would prefer that all of the eggs are baggied up individually. Now, I I would appreciate if you guys were able to baggy these eggs up individually before sending them to me, but I understand that that's a, that might not be the easiest task. So if you send it to me in a group that are incubated, if you, if you send me 20 eggshells that are incubated at 88 degrees, then I will be buying little baggies and I will be individually putting them into those little baggies. Um, but I don't really think anything will happen. But of course, there's a slight chance that some contamination stuff happens in the baggie before it gets to me because they're all together and kind of crushing towards each other and and all of that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So <laughs> Jashio wants a shout out for their leopard geckos, Buster and Nitro. Welcome, Buster and Nitro. We are glad to host your owner here at the Geeky Gecko Creations podcast, and I hope you guys have a Geeky Gecko great night. Do you know if an egg that dropped to 70 for 6 to 12? Yeah, if an egg drops or rises to extremes, it should be fine. You know what I mean? So that is it. That is the news. Um, there were a lot of perspectives that she was not thinking about that I was thinking about. And there was a lot of perspectives that I was not thinking about that she was thinking about. So she is more interested in the conservation side of this research. I mean, she's a scientist, so she's interested in, in it all at the end of the day. But, um, the, what was, what was I saying? Um, uh, the part that she's most interested in is, global warming affecting conservation. At least this is kind of what I gathered from our conversation. Because let's say leopard geckos are sex determinable, which we know they are. Incubate higher, higher likelihood of males. Incubate lower, higher likelihood of females. If global warming makes temperatures rise in certain regions and animals no longer have access to that lower range, it could make for majority of males to be born of of that species in that region. And so she's, you know, I didn't think about that perspective. What, what I was thinking about was something similar, which was um, female leopard geckos choosing to lay their eggs in certain temperatures based on balancing their own ecosystem of producing equal males to females. That was kind of where my my head was at. If leopard geckos go into that much detail with how they lay their eggs, so what about people that are incubating in two stages of temps? Do you think that would be useful? I do think that would be useful. I would just mark that on the bag. So if you if you started off, and this is actually something that I talked to her about because in crocodilians or at least turtles, in turtles the sex of the animal is not determined 
until the last 30% or 33% of the incubation period. But in leopard geckos, we know that the sex is determined, or at least we think, I don't know if there's any data to prove this necessarily, but we think and we hi we highly propose that leopard gecko sex is determined within the first 21 days, which is about 30 to 50, per the first 30 to 50% of incubation, depending on what temperatures you're incubating your leopard geckos at. So turtles sex determines later in their incubation and leopard gecko sex determines earlier in their incubation. Very, very interesting. So anyway, can you send me eggs where the temperature was moved? Absolutely. I will just mark that on the bag and they could do with it as they wish. So mark on the bag, like first 21 days, 82 degrees, last 21 days, uh, 88 degrees. Like just mark on the bag what you did and I will present that to them. Um, the other thing she said was we cannot collect enough eggs. Um, she, she basically said no limit. Like as many as I can collect will be used either for their current study right now or it will be kept in a part of the lab where they will use it for future studies. So – I had an egg. I have an egg that started deflating, but then I figured out that my incubator was low on humidity, but I fixed the problem and noticed, yep, that can happen for sure. That's why you don't want to you don't want to rely on your incubator to provide the humidity. Watch our watch our video on leopard gecko egg incubation. The incubator does not hold humidity. The plastic cup that the eggs are in should be airtight or only have a couple small holes in there, depending on how big the container is. And um, that should be holding all of the humidity. So some breeders start incubation at TSF for three weeks and then they move higher to TSM. Correct. Correct. So if that was something that you did, then just mark it on the bag so that I could mark that for them. And then they will be aware of that as well. Yeah, for sure. The bigger the sample pool, the better the results. And that's exactly what she said. You know what I mean? So can I ask, I have a baby leopard gecko, but I'm not sure what morph he is. He is orange, like a tangerine leopard geckos, but the tail is white with black dots, like a Max Snow. You got to send me pictures of that. That doesn't sound very familiar to me. It depends. Maybe if the gecko's younger, um, but yeah, you'll have to text me some photos. My phone number is right here or, you know, send me some pictures on Instagram or messenger and I'll see if I could pull it up right now on Instagram or messenger while we're on the live and, uh, decode those genetics for you. But that does not sound right. At first I was thinking some kind of like, uh, sun, what do they call it? Sunset Murphy's pattern list where it's like tangerine mixed with Murphy's pattern list. Um, but I can't say for sure unless I see the animal. If I have more than one snow het tremper, I try to spawn them so that reducing het tremper is considered pure snow. Sorry, I don't understand the question. If you could help, if you could rephrase that question, I'm not understanding the question. If you have more than one snow het tremper, if you try to spawn them to reduce het tremper is considered pure snow. Um, if what you're asking is if you can remove the tremper gene, yes, you can, but that takes a lot of testing to do that. If I have more than one snow head tremper, I tried to spawn. Okay. I, I already read that. Yeah. I started spraying the egg container and will continue to do that. Yeah. I try not to spray the eggs directly, but I wet the vermiculite around the eggs. And if you use perlite, you would wet the perlite around the eggs and the water will sink all the way to the bottom. Um, so there's that. Now we also have some other exciting news coming this week. I'm not going to spoil the news yet, but, uh, we got a brand new, really cool friend in, in Arizona, and we're going to be doing a lot of leopard gecko projects together. Um, and I'm actually going to be getting some bearded dragons from this person. And one of them is a zero bearded dragon. I am super excited because I have been wanting a zero bearded dragon for a long time. 
And thankfully, my wife let me have it. On top of that, on top of that, I am looking up quotes to convert my garage into a leopard gecko shop. How cool would that be? So there's a company out here. I mean, there's, I'm sure there's a few companies, but there's a company out here that was recommended to me to convert the whole garage, does insulation, AC work, redoes the floors, you know, so you can make the floors look epoxy and make it look real marbly and like real nice. And so I'm going to look into all that. And they allow you to pay it off on a monthly basis, just like we do with our leopard geckos. So if you want to buy a thousand dollar black knight, I can send you a thousand dollar black knight right now. And guess what? You don't even have to pay for it until next month, and you just pay $100 next month, $100 the month after that, $100 the month after that, and you have your Black Knight now before you even pay it off. So that's the benefit of working with companies you know, such as ourselves or such as like this garage redoing company um, that will take the money through layaway credit like that. You know what I mean? Um, so – yeah, a lot of exciting stuff. Um, I, I'm also going to be updating our website over the next 48 hours. So I'm not going to keep this stream too long so that hopefully tonight I can get some photographs of some geckos. And then between tomorrow and Wednesday, I can start integrating those onto our website. We have hundreds of very nice animals that we are going to be putting up for grabs. Let's see if I can... Uh, Show some of the show some of the animals. I mean, I don't have pictures of all of the animals, but I have some pictures of some animals that will be going onto the site. So this little one actually is going to be going onto the site. This is from our drippy bold stripe project, where the as you can see, the stripe starts right here down by the low low lateral sides and then this stripe right here this used to be one stripe it looks like i have like 15 cursors i don't know if that's showing for you guys but this was one stripe and this was one stripe but what the drippy bold stripe does and this is what all thick bold stripes do but specifically i'm calling this the drippy bold stripe project is these two stripes separate like the red sea and then um, the, 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 the pigment starts oozing into the body color of the gecko looking like dripping paint. So very cool stuff on that. Uh, this one I just sent out today, but was available. So this one will no longer be available and I'm going to get some better pictures. Like this one is fire right here. I'm going to get some good pictures of that. This one this one is super fire right here. And my prices are not going to be outrageous. They're going to be pretty good. You know, we're talking 100 to 200, maybe 250, 300 max for some of this stuff um, that are like clown infernos and mandarin infernos that are just beautiful, beautiful animals. Like take a look at this. This is a mandarin inferno right here. Um, this is a tremper albino mandarin inferno. Actually, this one is up on the website right now, I think for only 200 and it's already a sub adult now. And this, we, our guys, one of my favorite projects right now is the Afghanicus bold project. It just creates some of the most interesting contrast between the banding, the striping, the head stamp, the nose band, really cool stuff. This was when I took my baby russo clown het puzzle ball python that was not eating for us for five months i took it to froyo and then it started eating the next day so that just shows you a little drive will do you well sometimes here's whitney one of whitney's methods for bringing uh leopard geckos or, or animal shipment boxes is trader joe's this is one of my favorites guys i love this guy or gal. This is actually a girl. She just eats right out of my hand. This is why I love Sailfin Dragons. And I'm going to be doing much more Sailfin Dragon content as time goes on. So we did a little recap of the show last week. Um, Katrina Pena, how did you do at the show? I don't know if I saw you at the show, Katrina. But um, 
We have another show coming up in Pomona. So excited, guys. I love these shows. These shows are so fun. And next year, I'm going to start flying around the country is my goal to start flying out to different shows. Um, the website is not updated yet, Pedro. I'm so sorry, brother. Um, I was just telling everybody, hopefully by two by Wednesday is is what I'm stating now. I always I know I always say this, and it's probably so annoying. People are like, Frank, you always push it off. But um, after the stream tonight, my goal, I'm, I'm going to take some pictures of some geckos and between tomorrow and Wednesday, start to get those geckos uploaded in probably like waves of 10. So just check in with me. If you want to be the first to like see something on the website, check in with me and l ask me, hey, like text me. If you got my number, my number's right here. Text me and be like, hey, um, when you updating the website and I'll give you like the latest up-to-date information on when we're updating the website. Our shipping cost is still an all-time low of $34.99. Thanks to Redline Shipping, we can offer that extra bonus for you guys. Um, and live arrival guarantee, health guarantee. If an animal doesn't thrive, especially within the thir first 30 to 45 days, automatically refunding or replacing that animal for you. Some animals don't do so well in the transit, but um, – I just need to be kept up to date with how the animal is doing so I can help you troubleshoot what might be wrong at the very start. But of course, you are buying a healthy animal from us. And if for some reason it's not thriving in your location and your setup is on point, I will refund or replace that animal for you. So that is my word of honor, code of honor stand that, that I have with all of our customers. You know what I mean? Uh, no matter how expensive or not expensive the animal is. So – Look at these. These tegu eggs, they going to be hatching soon. Tegu eggs going to be hatching soon. Um, so really excited for that. This was a customer that sent us a photo with a little winky face gecko, one of our geckos that we sent out. Um, so Pomona was awesome. Saw Dave Kaufman there. Did not talk to Dave. Would have loved to, but did not get the chance. Saw MJ from Trap Talk there. Briefly talked to him. Saw Lord Alion from Canada there. Talk to him. Saw um, Austin from Canada, but did not talk to him. Um, uh, it's guys. Shows are so busy. When you are a vendor, if you are planning on vending, you need to be at your booth. Like you need to be the face of your booth. You need to be there. You need to be present. You need to be talking to people. And like, I just can't step away. I just can't do it no matter how much I want to, you know? Oh, yes. So we just recently shipped Pedro a gecko as well. It is very common. I, I get this response all the time. It's very common for leopard geckos not to eat for the first two to six weeks of being at a new location. Now, all of the leopard geckos that we ship out are healthy enough and they're at a size where I'm not concerned if they don't eat for two to four weeks, you know, depending on the age of the gecko and the size of the gecko, it could go even longer than that. But definitely let me know, like if the gecko is not eating week one, let me know. And I'll take a look at your, um, environment. But if the gecko is not losing weight, then it's definitely not something to be concerned about. Some of them just take a little bit of time to, to adjust. You know what I mean? So it's part of our black night obsidian line of black knight project right here the darkest of the dark we have a lot of black knight stuff this year that is going to be diversifying genetics we're also going to be working on some diversity black knight projects um with the breeder that i was talking about uh, over here and um some other projects that we're going to be working on so i'm really excited to diversify some cohesive projects that we have together. And I think that's going to be great. So David, man, have a good night, David. Yeah. I'm probably not going to stay on too much longer as well, because you guys want me to update my website with geckos, right? And that I am going to do, I'm going to do that. And to do that, I need to, uh, thanks so much, David. Always appreciate the kind words. You know what I mean? So if you guys are tuning in now and you missed what this episode was about, we are calling for all breeders, whoever is willing to participate in sending us leopard gecko eggshells. And if you would like to, then go to our website below and send me an email saying that you would like to send me your eggshells. 
put them in a Ziploc baggie. I'll give you my address and you could ship them out. Um, these eggshells will be used for scientific research at the University of California Tech, Tech, Technological, Caltech, whatever that is. Um, there are some students there that will be studying the eggshells to determine if um, the machinery that they're using can 100% determine if an egg was incubated at a certain temperature. And then they will use that machinery by uh, – the ultimate goal is to use that for collecting wild eggs so that they can determine um, – you know, if global warming is affecting the native populations of certain species that are sex determinable, determinable. So we supplement every week, Katrina. So if you watch my, if you do a Google search, I mean a YouTube search, baby leopard gecko setup or leopard gecko setup, geeky gecko creations. If you search that on YouTube, you'll find our videos where I show how we set up and clean our geckos. Um, we clean our geckos once a week, you know, sometimes 10, every 10 to 14 days, depending on the age of the gecko. And we change out the food and change out the water on those basis. Um, if the powder is dirty after 10 to 14 days, we'll toss the powder. But usually it, the powder can last for about three to four weeks before it needs to be changed out. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, we like to freshen up their, their powder. I would say almost every feeding or every other feeding, uh, typically is what we do. So we just buy it in bulk and mix it in bulk. And then we are good to go with that. So hope that helps. Tia Daniels, your message just says, I, so if you have a question, please retype the question. Uh, I'm not going to stay on this live too much longer. So if you do have any other questions, let me know. I want to take some photos of some leopard geckos. We have at least a hundred leopard geckos, which I don't think I'm going to get to take photos of all 100, but I should be able to get to at least 30 by this Wednesday. And then maybe 50, maybe 50 by this, by this weekend, maybe 60 to 70 by next week. <laughs> These are my goals. Um, you know, but things, Man, it's just so busy. Business is so busy. So it's it's really tough to meet these demands. So I really apologize for that because as a business, I like to pride myself in having geckos on our site. So I always try to have them up there. It's just really, really difficult to stay on top of that. And because of that, I've also been – I haven't been able to – I have more gecko videos. We have more babies that are hatching and all that kind of stuff that I'm trying to – um produce videos of. We have how to train your dragon sailfin series. We have a tour of uh, behind the, not behind the scenes, but like, yeah, like a tour of, um, iguana land. So all of these videos I have to release in due time, guys, Jonathan Rebolar, What's up, my man? Uh, Jonathan, let me know your schedule. If you got more hours to clean some ball pythons or maybe some leopard geckos, let me know. Of course, no pressure, but, um, Jacob, one of our other workers, um, he's moving right now. And because of that, uh, he's had to pull back some of his hours from cleaning. So we have some hours of availability that we could need for this week. So only 16 likes. I can't see how many people are here, but can we get the likes up guys before we leave or anybody who watches this back, please, pretty please with the cherry leopard gecko on top. If we could get those likes up, I would really appreciate that helps us get our channel out there more and more and more. So if you guys are going to be um, in Pomona, California, August 20th, there is the Reptile Super Show, and that is such a great show, and we will be there next time. Will you add T-shirt merch to the site? I apologize, Tia. Uh, that is another thing that I should have already – I should have – on the site and I do not, but good news, good news on the merch. Okay. So we do have hats. We do have shirts. I'm going to be adding these tank tops, summertime tank tops, which if you know me, my skin is very sensitive and I need very comfortable, lightweight and breathable material. And this is the best. And the shirts that we have, I kid you not are like the best material for me at least, you know, but, um, soft, breathable, thin, 
does not show sweat. So if you're the type of person that has like sweat stains and stuff like that, like, like I tend to, it does not show those. And that's very good because those are like embarrassing when you have to be doing business stuff or, you know, presentations and you got, you know, sweat stains and all that kind of stuff. And it would always make me feel insecure in the past. So having a t-shirt that does not show these sweat stains. Oh my gosh. I can't tell you how much of a confidence boost that is. So, um, in addition to that, I just ordered, check this out. You know what? You know what? You guys are here. You are going to benefit because you guys are here. You probably can't see this right now, but I am looking up Sticker Mule, the place that we get our stickers from. And I'm going to show you what I just ordered. And we also will have these at shows. So check. Could you just, could you hear me right now? Um, wait, let, me, let, let me make sure there's no like credit card information on here or anything like that. Uh, order total production status and items. Now I think we're good, but if any of you guys see any of my personal information, please let me know. Were you guys able to hear me when I was talking a second ago and I was on Google. Okay, I'll, I'll listen and, and see if I can hear this back. But check this out. I'm really, really, really excited for this. So we are now going to have keychains. Each of these keychains are going to come with a metal, like a metal keychain thing. So this is just, it's not going to look this crummy. It's going to look much, much better. So we are going to have this style keychain. We are going to have this style keychain and i did not make them so big because if they're on your keys you don't want these big giant clunky things so they're only 1.25 inches and when i get them if i feel like that's too big i can go down to the one inch keychain and if i feel like it's too small i could go up to 1.5 or two inch keychain but this is experimentation with the keychain we're restocking on our holographic stickers so you by the way guys you, I'm, I'm probably going to make it so that you get a keychain with every Brooke. You guys, you guys, you guys need to pray for Brooke or something broken Brooke. We just need to call her broken Brooke. Um, she's another one supposed to work for us and then gets broken. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so broken Brooke is broken again. She's always hurting herself always, whether she's crashing her bike or whether she's, um, falling down some rocks and cutting open her shins or this time she fell in the shower and dislocated her shoulder. So definitely sending thoughts and prayers your way, hoping you're, you're doing good Brooke, but uh broken Brooke is at it again. She she's uh living up to the name. So anyway, uh, not to take away from broken Brooke cause we love broken Brooke, but uh, I think there's a good chance in the future that I will include every single one of these with every single purchase that you guys make. So every time you buy a gecko, you'll get a keychain. You'll get both keychains. I don't know how I'm going to do this yet, but you'll get one or both keychains. Right now, you currently get both stickers. So you're if you order a gecko from us, um, you are going to get a holographic sticker and you're going to get a glitter sticker. And the glitter sticker looks much better in person. Uh, they told me that... It's um, the way that they have this proof right now is it doesn't show up rainbow, but the glitter is actually uh, rainbow colored and looks really, really great. So you can get some of these um, at the reptile shows that we go to. We're going to be giving away these stickers for free by request. These are going to be clear clear back stickers. So it'll be the logo with a, a clear adhesive side to it. So that'll be free at shows. We're going to have those in bulk. Look, I ordered 300 of those, 300 of those. These holographic stickers are a little bit more pricey. So they, um, they come when you buy a gecko, but I'm thinking if you buy a gecko, you get all of this, you get the one keychain, the next keychain the holographic, the glitter, and both clear stickers. But maybe that's a bit much, right? I don't know. I, you guys tell me, as a consumer, is that too much for you? Is that just is that just overwhelming for you to buy a $50 gecko and then you get all this stuff along with it? Or do you like the idea? 
of that. And if you order multiple geckos from us in time, do you want to get a keychain every single time or should it be like a a, a one-time customer thing? You know what I mean? Like the keychains are for the first time that you buy from us, you know? Let me know your guys' thoughts. I'm open to that. The keychains are not ridiculously expensive. I could easily put them in every single box of a gecko that sells. You know what I mean? And it's basically like a $5 gift pack that you get with every – ooh, that's what I should sell on our website. I should sell gift packs. So you'll get two uh, – you'll get two of the smaller stickers. You'll get the holographic and the glitter sticker. Then you'll get both keychains. So it's a six-item – what did I just call it? Something pack? Promo pack? What did I call it? I, if you guys can help me. But um, yes, so I need to get our shirts up on the website and then also these promo packs up on the website. But if you come to a show, you could get some stickers for free. And if you – gift pack. Thank you, Hannah. And um, appreciate that. We'll, we'll put your name up on – look at that beautiful carrot tail by Hannah Clevet. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it, buddy. So I feel so bad because some of the people that have been buying geckos from us this week, we've been out of stickers. And they told me the stickers aren't going to be here until Tuesday the 25th. So I'm not going to have stickers back in stock until next week. Um, but I don't know. Is that too much? Should I put six gift pack items inside of every package of that every time someone buys a gecko? That might, that might be too much, especially if you're buying 10 geckos from us a year. You're getting 10 keychains a year. What are you going to do with all those keychains? That could just be like a waste. Like we don't want it to be a, a, a waste. Maybe, maybe, maybe I ask the person like, hey, do you want – Do you want like once I've sent them a keychain, maybe I ask them, do you want another keychain? Maybe they have friends they'll give it to or maybe they have other key, sets of keys they want to put it on. But – you also don't want it to be a waste, right? Like you don't want it to, to be a waste. You know what I mean? So one keychain and a couple stickers in an order. Yeah. So this last show at Anaheim, we were running low on stickers. So I usually give people a holographic and a glitter sticker with every purchase of, yeah, every purchase at, of a gecko. Um, but we were running low at the Anaheim show, so I told all of our workers, hey, we can only do one sticker, and we had to have people choose. Do you want a glitter sticker or do you want a holographic sticker? And there were almost – I don't think there were any men that chose the glitter sticker, but a lot of women chose the glitter sticker. Um, the, now, the glitter stickers are cool. I changed them this time. I'll show you what I did. I'm always making changes. So with the glitter sticker this time – First of all, I added our name, Geeky Gecko Creations, in there. That was not in there before. And branding is very important, so I'm glad to have that in there now. And as you can see, the blue, the blue is not glitter. I purposely did that compared to my last order. Here, Oh, so here's what the glitter looks like. I forget. This was – this was, look, look how pretty that is. It's like a rainbow glitter. So this is what the – glitter looks like except now it's going to have the geeky gecko creations and the blue is not going to be glitter just the gecko and the perimeter will be glitter so i'm going to test that out and if i like it i'll keep it that way i could also play around with it let me see i don't think i can see it anymore i don't think i can see it anymore but when i had this order made they let you adjust the order and make different adjustments to it. Oh, look. <laughs> look at this. I made them do nine adjustments for this. Okay. We're, we're going to end the live stream here. I'm going to show you all this, and then I'll show you what I finally settled on. So this – what when I bought the sticker, they don't actually make it until you approve what is called a proof quote unquote, a proof. So this is the first proof they sent me. It's a glitter that is an outer perimeter of glitter, but the inside is not glitter. And I said, nah, I don't want that. What did I say? What did I tell them? I said, can you please make the whole sticker glitter? 
And then they sent me this. This was proof number two. But you can't really see the words Geeky Gecko creation. Now, again, that it might be easier to see the words Geeky Gecko creation when you have the rainbow glitter because this glitter, this silver looking glitter is not what it's going to look like. They told me. They told me it's going to look like the rainbow glitter and the rainbow glitter is lighter in color. So what I told them was, can you please uh, – oh, uh, I said, if you look at my last glitter artwork, the glitter was a little bit lighter and more rainbow. Can you replicate this? And then they replied, the previous preview with the rainbow effect is no longer available. However, the item will look the same as your previous order. We've also made the text solid white in order to enhance readability. So this is proof three. So this is the third proof they sent me out of nine. I didn't like it. I thought the white stood out too much and it took away from the gecko. So I said to them, just a quick question. In your experience, do, the, do you think the lettering would take away from the gecko? And they sent me proof four, which proof four is geeky geckos is white and the eyeballs are white and everything else is glitter. And I didn't like that. So I said, can you make the chin of the leopard gecko and the chest of the leopard gecko white as well? And this is proof five. <laughs> oh, that. Oh, wait. Proof five. I don't know what. I don't know what that is, but – oh, then they sent me like this accidental proof when I asked them. Proof six was this. I was like, what in the cousin tarnation is this? So this this was proof six. I was like, absolutely not. Let's go back to what we did before. So proof seven. Here's proof seven. The white chest of the gecko, the white eyes of the gecko, and the white letters of the gecko. And to be 100% honest, I might try this out. I kind of like this. But I didn't want to do it for, the, for this order. I said, can I see one more proof of the entire gecko in glitter and everything else non-glitter? Thank you. Exclamation mark. Big smiley face. That's, that's what I gave to them. Proof eight. I didn't like it. I didn't like how the perimeter was not glitter. So we end up on our final proof. Proof nine, which I like for this order, is glitter perimeter, glitter gecko, and the blue and the white is not glitter. And again, this is all going to be rainbow, which is going to be very similar. So this is a great company, guys. And by the way, they got all these proofs done. Within like two hours, I kid you not, I was messaging them back and forth. As soon as I messaged them back, five minutes later, a proof was done. And they say give they they say give them up to four hours to make a proof change. But even overnight, at one o'clock in the morning, they were making proof changes. But again, here's what the glitter is going to look like. It's going to look more rainbowy like this. So we will see what that looks like. But I hope you guys enjoyed that little tangent there. <laughs> Erica says she likes the regular sticker. So the holographic, right? If I was designing these stickers, I would leave an empty line so those stickers could be used as name tags. That's interesting. Which, by the way, in Anaheim, for the first show, I think, the first time, because uh, even in Pomona, when I was in Pomona, I don't remember they... I don't remember that they did this, but this time they had name tags. Let me see if I got it here. But they actually have name tags and they have like an exotic looking neck band that, that it attaches to your name tag and it's, it's pretty cool. So I did like that. But uh, that's a good idea, Chalice. Um, leave the stickers blank for name tags. It's a bit much, the six items, you know, in, in, in the package. Two stickers and a key ring is just fine. Cousin Tarnation. Yeah, I don't know where I started saying that from, but I kid you not, I say that all the time. What in the Cousin Tarnation? It might have came from like a, a TikTok. Oh, you know what? It came from a TikTok. Let, let's see. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's see if we can find these TikToks. Uh, back in the day TikToks. Um, cousin Tarnation. 
Beverly White. Oh no, there's cursing in it. I can't I can't do it because there's cursing in it. Let me see. Wait, I don't know if you guys are even gonna be able to hear this, but oh man. All right, we know <laughs> we normally don't curse on our show, but I don't even know if you can hear this, but let me know if you can hear this. <laughs> so anyway, if you look up the um, what in tarnation is this? Uh oh, let me see here. Were you guys able to hear that? By the way, uh, ah, oh, you can't hear. Oh, wait, wait, though, guys, wait, hold up, hold up, wait a minute. Put a little. What is what? What is the thing? Hold up, wait a minute. Put a little leopard gecko in it let's do a reshare share the system audio now it now it might make it like echo or something like that but let's see man these tarnation ones are so funny let me see let me see if there's like a youtube tarnation reel real quick what in the tarnation <laughs> it's just like funny things that you don't expect to see and then they do it in like this hillbilly type thing thing anyway let me see if you can hear this oh her thank you <laughs> what is she said what in the tarnation that must be a southern thing so anyway the what in the tarnation there's a beverly white thing that goes along with that people remember Oh my YouTube So to help you well. remember that Liberty Mutual customizes You can hear, insurance. yay! Here's okay, I'm not going to stay on it too long because I, I don't like it's a lot perfect. of cursing. Or any cursing. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. It's funny. The videos that they show are just like the weirdest things that people do. Like you'll see a truck, you'll, you'll see like a pickup truck driving down the highway and there'll be like 10 mattresses stacked up and it's just like hill stuff, you know? Oh, it actually is a song. Anyway, I don't know. I, I, it's not, it's not showing. It's not. It, I'm not seeing it. Beverly White. Beverly. Oh, Betty White. <laughs> It's mainly on TikTok. Oh, I thought they had some that were that were bleeped out. Sorry, guys. Oh. What in cousin fucking tarnation, Alabama Betty Crocker, <laughs> Miss fucking Betty White? Shit oh, is sorry, it? sorry for the uh, profanity there. So anyway, there's a bunch of those on youtube oh i mean on tiktok youtube instagram they're just so funny so anyway that's where i got the what in the tarnation from i just leave all the curse words out in it um, but they have some really really good ones like that one wasn't that big i mean it was it was that was a cousin tarnation moment for sure alabama betty crocker betty white <laughs> yeah they're funny man they're funny um golly all right guys well, I thank you so much. I'm glad we can we can kind of end it on a comical note here. Um, let me see if I, I missed everything. Proof seven is a winner. Oh, oh, by the way, Mark, I so Mark sent us the gift box from our last live stream. I did try the barbecue salt on a chicken sandwich today, a southern fried chicken sandwich that was mysteriously hidden in my freezer. I thought I had none left, and I was rearranging things, and out pops this uh you know, uh, a fried chicken sandwich that's frozen in the freezer. So I'm like, I need to eat this thing. And I used your uh, salt on top of that. So thank you so much. What in the cousin tarnation? Betty Crocker, Betty White. There's a bunch of those. There's a bunch of them out there. If you just look up cousin tarnation, Betty Crocker, Betty White, you'll have some good laughs. So I'm going to end it there so I could take some photos of some geckos tonight, do some other animal care. Um, 
and eventually hopefully get back to making some videos because I got a ton of content that I want to release some videos on. So that was the slayest stream I've ever watched. What a what a good what a good message, Jeshio. Also, I message you happy I got to watch the stream. Thank you, Bam Bam, Ashley Cox, uh, Anthony, Chalice, Mark, everybody, Tia, who's here, who participated. I really love and appreciate you guys. Um, I don't know the next time I'm going to do a live. Sometimes I spontaneously will do them throughout the week. Um, but I do have some new announcements that I will be making later this week. You know, we're going to have Robin from Redline Shipping on. Uh, if you missed what this stream was about, please watch the earliest part of the stream so you could consider helping us with collecting leopard gecko egg shells, which will go to the good cause of reptile conservation and study and research that is happening right now at University of Caltech in California. So love you guys. Appreciate you guys. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, have a geeky gecko. Great day. Peace.